Can you see that? Still loading? Yes. Excellent. Okay, great. Um, I'll close this out so you can kind of see Philippe's face more. But um, really, uh, even if it's a fireside chat, you know, I think I wanted to make clear we will be hitting very, very relevant and important topics that Philippe very kindly um, has put together to share with all of you. As I mentioned, we're so lucky to have all these companies sharing their use cases, where they are in their journey, why they're excited about GitOps and participating. And in addition, Philippe will be sharing really important things about cloud native trends and you know, the, really the business value because I know sometimes um, we've had audiences come here and say, well, I'm bought in on GitOps, but I need help on, you know, explaining to my management or explain to others or why we want to um, make this change, um, as well as, you know, very honestly, certain challenges to keep in mind. So please, not only um, Philippe, but many others, this is your opportunity to chat with them and ask questions in our Slack channel. Um, and as in all past GitOps days, even after the talk is over, like we're seeing all the speakers in there, like talking and sharing and continuing to answer questions. So, um, you know, I, we're streaming to YouTube. So that means if you paused and went to a meeting and came back, like, you know, later we'll still be tracking and we'll call people like Philippe to come. Um, so yes, so we'll we'll talk about um, a little bit Philippe and Arunch, you know, why GitOps, the trends and you know how GitOps really helps and the business value, their particular use cases and challenges to keep in mind. So I'm very excited to share the stage with Philippe. So I will stop sharing. And yes, why don't we just get right to it? Philippe, tell us, tell us more about what brought, what brings you here and your background. Okay, first of all, I, I'm really super excited to be here with you and, uh, and it's, it's a great joy for me because I think that this day is, these two days will be absolutely amazing and we absolutely need, need those kind of event to promote uh, what is GitOps. And I would say that um, in our fireside chat, uh, the idea is definitely not to bring uh, techy content, but perhaps to see the other side of the coin on more on the business side, because like you perfectly said, Tamao, from time to time, it's necessary for the techy guy to explain the value that it brings to people who do not care or do not understand the words about the technology. And it's the focus of our fireside chat and it's why I enjoy it so much. So uh, just let me introduce myself very quickly. So uh, currently I'm the chief technology officer of Orange Business Services. So the Orange Enterprise Market Company. Um, I'm linking the Talco to Techco strategy and transformation. And to, to, to be very transparent, I'm a pure software guy in a pure network world. So I'm trying to bridge and to connect the dots between those two words that are more and more and more converging. Um, I try to be as much as connected as I can to the tech and the open source ecosystem. And I'm bringing, uh, and I'm s strongly implying corporate strategy bringing a kind of technology breakthrough impact and opportunities like uh, we, we will share right now. Um, one of the very interesting part of the job, of my job that I really love so much is that I'm spending a lot of time with my peer CTO or head of technology from our customers or from our partners. And it's a perfect position to observe the ongoing trends. So um, I will share uh, some uh, during uh, this uh, keynote. Just a, a final word, um, I'm also um, advising several investment funds and VC funds here at Orange. And I just wanted to say that I'm a proud uh, board advisor of uh, WeWork. So it's my great pleasure to, week, to work with you uh, on ne nearly a uh, weekly basis. So um, why basically GitOps Days for me is um, a very important uh, event. Uh, like I said, um, GitOps is a very techy topic to catch. Uh, we have, uh, for the, the two coming days, I would say an incredible lineups of experts that are here. But you know, in the enterprise market, the maturity and the awareness level is really different with a very high standard uh, deviation. So it means that um, you can uh, bet on the fact that everyone is really aware about what's going in terms of trends and catching the whole value of GitOps. And um, 
what we observe, and we had a very interesting post uh, in, in the new stack um, um, uh, site that showed yesterday that Guidance has entered into the top five of the most important topic in the cloud native ecosystem years on years. So definitively, it means that um, uh, GitOps uh, bring uh, real value and a and, and lot of, of differentiation for a company who embrace those practices and those, and, and, and those tooling. But I think that there is an even more strategic transformation move behind. Okay, there is the technology standpoint, but I think that from a, an operational model, from a business model, and from a pricing model as well, we can expect even more and pushing further the topic of efficiency, productivity, and competitivity when you embrace, I would say, the full end-to-end -end delivery model, and when you're able to, to close the gap between um, I would say the, the world of the deployment and the world of the operation. And it's exactly, I would say, the focus of GitOps. And I'm truly convinced that it can highly contribute to make, to make the company much more competitive by embracing, I would say, those practices. So um, for me, um, uh, Tamao, uh, just perhaps saying a word about, about, about GitOps. For me, GitOps basically is, I would say, DevOps applied to cloud native ecosystem and stack. Um, and only using these words, uh, I can testimony to you that um, it's not so well understood. Uh, the, the, the cloud native ecosystem, um, the Kubernetes, the, why, the role of the orchestration, all this new way of delivering the, 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 the services and all the modernization that it implies from a company standpoint, in terms of culture, in terms of mindset, in terms of tool set, in terms of skill set, it's maybe a huge, huge shift. Uh, what I really enjoy um, in GitOps is that it's really focused on um, the continuous deployment that is enabling the continuous operation. And why I'm strongly putting the focus on this, because it's exactly here where, for me, the value happen. It happened here and it bring here the shift, the fundamental shift in terms of operational model, and it's what we will deep dive, I would say, um, uh, later. So um, today, um, what is interesting for a company that already engaged, for instance, a DevOps transformation, is that uh, they are on the right way. It's the same principle in terms of cultural change, in terms of collaboration, in terms of sharing, it leveraged the same principle in terms of automation and self-service and as code infrastructure. So there is a highly converging, I would say, journey when you enter already in DevOps and extending the practices into the cloud native and Kubernetes world, thanks to the GitOps uh, framework. So uh, here it is on the basically what is GitOps for me and, and what is matter uh, so much. Yeah, and I just wanted to, um, I mean, so many good points and, you know, just to reemphasize also what you kind of mentioned a little bit earlier is the competitive angle, right? We've had so many companies say that it's become necessary for velocity. Um, and in our past events, we've talked about the DORA metrics and how it's been researched that the companies that can uh, deliver more speedily can be more competitive. And then on the other end, also removing the manual stuff, you can leave that to automation and you use your teams to be actually innovating as opposed to making sure that things aren't breaking. Um, and finally, I think in, in your case with um, Orange, right, just scale. A company like yours is not going to be able to use tools that uh, you know don't scale. So the approach and the tools that you've put together, I think you're a great example of the journey that you're taking with real needs, right? So if it works for you, it's gonna work for so many people who are listening today. Exactly. Absolutely. Cool. Um, as I shared in the beginning with our bullet points, did you want to add a few more points or shall we talk about um, the cloud native trends that you were? I think that we can shift to the cloud native trends yes. and I would be very fast on this because, um, you know, uh, I love the talk uh, previously from Taylor um, about uh, the CNCF topic and uh, the ecosystem and he perfectly depicted the picture about the crossing the cars uh, reality. Um, you know, um, 
um, like I would say every company is, I try to attend to the, the major events uh, around the world uh, about technology. And one of my favorite one is AWS reInvent because I think that they have a very, very impressive engineering. And during the last reInvent in last November in Vegas, basically um, some very important trends were shared. First, um, for more than three days, it was mainly about migration workloads. We learned that everything is managed by default. We observed that we have an explosion of serverless, of serverless services, uh, i.e. people do not want to manage the underlying plumbing, they only want to use. Um, and in the enterprise market, the reality for me is that cloud native is, I would say, stuck somewhere in between. And today we have a strong, strong issue to manage. And for me, it's perhaps one of the highest uh, barriers to overcome for the cloud native ecosystem. It's about the developer experience, how to make teams more efficient, productive and competitive into, I would say, a landscape where uh, a, a company and, and vendors are highly aggressive in the migration topic um, and uh, on the other end, on the serverless, on the serverless world. So I think that we definitely need to simplify and to make the journey more professional and more competitive. And definitely the developer experience is a topic, but I truly believe that the GitHub, because you are able to set um, a, a perfect pipeline for the development, for the security teams, for the, the operation teams, and, and having all the, the activities, I would say, automated since the building, the setup of the platform, the deployment of the infrastructure, and the constant checking and the drift management control about what has been deployed. So I think that this part is a, a strong, strong, strong learning. Um, if you want, I can perhaps jump into the, the core challenges because uh, today when I'm talking to company, uh, what I observe is that um, they are facing a lot of uh, challenges. The first one is one that have been introduced by Taylor, is the imperative versus the declarative shift. And you cannot imagine the number of companies that are absolutely not at scale on this topic. And it's, I would say, you know, one of the four pillars about um, the, the GitOps manifesto, about the declarative uh, the declarative way of managing, um, I would say, the infrastructure and the application. The, you talked uh, previously, Tamao, about um, the, the, DORA, the, the DORA metrics, but uh, you know for true, when you deep dive at corporate scale, uh, you, you think that uh, company or delivery factory are driven, but you, can see, you, you realize that the scope of automation is not on the full spectrum. So how are you able to manage this? So, we have a problem in terms of automation perimeter. We have a topic about the developer experience. We have a, a topic of how to move from pet to cattle. And in certain company, we have, I would say, an extra miles, pet to cow to cattle, because there is an industrial milestone that is absolutely necessary, I would say, to, to scale up. And here, where I wanted to put the focus on is that a um, um, lot of company has invested, I would say, in CI, CD, or in DevOps style of uh, producing uh, their services and solution. But uh, I observe a lot of companies that are eating what I'm calling the scaling wall. Because at the moment, when you spend a lot of time, money, and people about doing all the automation and the set of your infrastructure, but if you do not take into account the operational uh, part and and the remediation and the and the control and and the continuous control and and and, and look back about what's happening into your cluster. I think that you only cross a part. Uh, uh, you are in you you cross only a part of the, of of the journey. So here, uh, I think that this part for me is very very important. And to overcome this, uh, I would say scaling wall hit it's absolutely important to move from, I would say, traditional CI-CD to a CD-CO, uh, where basically the operation is something that is onboarded by default. It's core in the GitOps uh, framework, and I think it's absolutely key if you want to embrace the end-to-end -end, uh, quality and services. Yeah, um, I just want to highlight as well, we totally understand for some people if the uh, moving from imperative declarative can be emotionally a bit, mm -hmm. Frightening. 
Um, but I think when you attach it to the absolute business need for scale, at some point, you know, you'll see so many companies like Orange and others that have adopted that and been successful. And we get it, you know, it can be, it can feel challenging in the beginning, but you'll see the benefits. Yes, and in terms of benefits, you know, if, if you don't want to, to jump into the technical topic, but more on the business case, on the business value, it's better velocity. It's the ability to innovate and bring more business agility. It's, it's enabling a quick and easy recovery. It has been introduced previously by Taylor. It's about security because it's about the separation of concern. It's a, an impressive gain in terms of auditability, compliance, observability. And for all these, those reasons, I think that uh, Gilad should be definitively into the transformation journey of every company who wants to be, uh, I would say, a leader in the digital journey or in, into their business. Absolutely. Um, so I wanted to ask uh, if you had more to add to that or you want to segue into your specific um, needs we, at Orange. We can jump into the Orange Business Services context. So what like, I can briefly share is that uh, our job is basically um, we are network native digital services company. So we are delivering IT, digital, uh, network and telco services. Uh, we are nearly um, uh, 30k people company. We are present in more than 65 countries across the world. So we are running a very, very huge IT to make it all this, all this um, uh, working. But we are um, lucky because we are in the moment where we have a very high convergence in terms of stack. And today Kubernetes has become the by default operating system of all those IT, digital, network and telco, or it's becoming. So for us, uh, having such a convergence from a technological standpoint is uh, something that is very interesting and that is um, and with, that we are currently working to highly modernize uh, the way to manage our services and solution um, uh, shifting i would say from a very siloed approach to something more transversal uh, in a kind of uh, i would say platform engineering approach where kubernetes is at the core of our transformation and today um, because I said uh, previously that from time to time it's quite quite complicated to move from pet to cattle. We introduced an, an extra mice uh, about the cow story because um, we decided uh, be because we don't want to move in a big bang mode, but we wanted to learn as well. When we started five years ago, we decided to pick for a, um, a master mono cluster, and today this cluster is. Uh, 2,500 nodes, it's more than a thousand of namespaces. It's roughly uh, 15,000 uh, pods running. So we have more than 150 uh, IT business applications serving our customer across the world that is running, I would say, on top of this. And why we decided since, I would say, one year to shift to GitOps, it's because we ourselves hit the scaling wall that I introduced previously. We spent so many time and so much energy about having the story, uh, setting the infrastructure, setting the application, doing the deployment. But when we realized the complexity of how to, to make the observability, how to make the, 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 the production ready at, at very high grade, uh, basically, it turned a nightmare when it was about to onboard new application, new services, or to, or to migrate um, from our legacy portfolio, new application. So that's why we decided to basically um, a shift uh, to GitOps because we needed absolutely to find a new leeway. And this leeway for us is um, uh, jumping uh, thanks to GitOps because um, um, it's open door for a full new way of doing the operation, more the, us, the, the SRE way and people on the operation much more connected to the business, bringing much more value and reducing uh, at a very, very high rate the feedback loop to, I would say, adapt and adjust on something that is uh, uh, that has been migrated in a highly declarative mode. So for us, it has, be, it has checked all the box, accelerating the declarative way, everything versionable and trustable for the auditability, automatically pulled to manage the separation of duty, 
And the most important for us that enable the transformation on the operational side is that it manage the drift control or it give us all the information to manage this drift control uh, properly to um, the level of uh, quality in terms of target that uh, we deliver to our customers. So yes, it has been a very, very um, uh, interesting transforming journey at which, uh, of course, uh, Flux CD is uh, the cornerstone uh, of the GitOps framework that uh, we rely on. <laughs> and thank you as always for your great support for Flux. Um, so we are we are over time, but um, maybe because um, you were going to talk a little bit about your next steps and some challenges, maybe just three things for your particular use case that you'll be um, focusing on the next steps of your journey that might be helpful for others who are thinking about it. OK, so very quickly on this um, first one, uh, working on the developer experience. Second one, jumping into the cluster API topic because we are more and more to onboard, I would say, a hybrid architecture based on virtual machine and bare metal uh, uh, in multi-cloud and multi-infrastructure topic. So this one is very, very important for us. And the last one is the modernization of the observability and the open uh, telemetry shift. I would say that it should be certainly the three main most important topic that we have on our journey, I would say for perhaps the six to 12 months to come. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> we really, really appreciate it. Um, uh, because of time, uh, we'll monitor the Slack and please, yes, if anybody has questions for this unique opportunity to hear such a great use case, thank you so much for joining us from France in yes. your evening. <laughs> Thanks so much, Tamo. Uh, it was so, 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 so great pleasure for me to be here and here with you. And I would say let's, uh, for everyone, uh, enjoy uh, GitOps Days because it's absolutely amazing and what a lineup of speakers. So uh, take care and enjoy the rest of the event. Bye. Thank you so much.